I'd like to thank our silver silver level sponsors, the NSA, Exabeam, Accenture Federal Services, Open Security, Titanium Level, Cybersec Jobs, Denim Group, Alamo ISSA, and Lamarck Solutions. And next is breaking and entering with SDR with Red Sain. Thank you very much. All right, give me a few more seconds here. I'm still finishing setting up. Uh, we'll get this going. All right. Hey, thank you guys for hanging out for the last presentation of the day. I know it's been a long day. Everyone hung in there. Good job. Go ahead and do. Yeah, we'll just do that, won't we? All right. Can everybody hear me? I'm, I'm going to try to jump around. I'm pretty loud. All right. Hey, thanks everybody for coming. My name is Red Sand. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I started when I was 13. I'm a part of the uh, old school hacking crew. Lots of queries and part of us. Uh, we're in crack. We did a bunch of shit back in the 2000s. Um, I disappeared for a while because I had to focus on my career. Uh, so now I'm back to screw some stuff up again. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on breaking into uh, garage doors, basically commercial garage door systems. And, and so before we begin, every, every good fun hacking article or experience starts with, does somebody have a clicker? Is that a thing? Starts with a disclaimer. The disclaimer is that don't get me in trouble. Don't need that. Oh, that's even better. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. That's even better. Okay. Yeah. Point is, is don't get me in trouble. <clears throat> so what I'm going to show you guys today will allow you to get access to uh, complexes. Uh, what that does not mean it will allow you to the to individual people's doors, but that gets you access to the physical building. Uh, the reason that's to me before we get a little bit too far into this, uh, the reason I think that's kind of important is because. Uh, sucker me, I actually, I thought I felt safe and secure uh, behind uh, this concept. And so when I found out I'm not, it kind of, it changed my mind. So take that kind of lighthearted when you go with this. We're going to have a fun conversation today, but you can't get in trouble. So just be real careful about uh, what you do and, and make good decisions. Uh, hopefully you're all adults. All right. So we're going to try something a little bit different uh, that I typically do. Uh, wh what I think I perceived is that this talk is very technical. And so if that's true, what I want you to do is if I start getting really complicated and technical and you don't understand because I talk fast, I want you to raise your hand. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to call on you because I don't actually care. What I want to know is if enough hands go up, then I'll slow down to stop. Okay. So before we jump into this, uh, a show of hands, who here has played with a software defined radio before? Wow. A lot of you guys. All right. So here's how, I, so what I like to do is I like to tell stories. Here's how I got into this. Um, I stayed up one night and uh, I spent a thousand dollars on equipment, and then uh, somebody that really loves me told me that I needed to uh, justify that payment or uh, or return them. <clears throat> and so I decided that I would attack the first thing that saw I written near me, and it was a key fob. And so it started with this. And so I like what I like to do is I kind of like to tell a story about how I got about doing this. So I first started with buying software-defined radios. And if those of you that aren't familiar, here's some examples of some up there. I have some other examples down here. Um, this is the ADOM Pluto. This allows you to transmit and receive. Here's the line, here's a mini line wire, allows you to transmit and receive. Uh, what I'm going to be using for the demo is the RTO SDR, a little silver thing. It only allows you to receive. If you're going to play with this, I recommend, and you're, and you're nervous and have anxiety like I do, I recommend b uh, buying the RTL SDR because it's receive only, and you can't transmit and get in trouble. Just a suggestion. Right. So I stayed up late one night, and I bought a bunch of this stuff. <clears throat> and I thought, okay, so now I need to figure out how to, like, how to break into these things. And so this is what we're attacking. Uh, I'm going to actually pass these around. I've got one for either side. You guys can look at them and play with them. Um, if, you, if you guys are doing my best. So one of these is to my house, I swear to God. I need that back. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I did not clone my own key fob. I should have done that. Um, if, you, if you've seen these before, they look really familiar to me. I, over 10, 15 years living in apartment complexes, I've seen these variations time and time again. And it seems like, if, tell me if I got this wrong, but I feel like I've captured the majority of kind of what, of, the, of those up there on that screen. Do these look familiar to you guys? Have you seen these before? Yes? No? Okay, great. Good. Great. I want to hear that. Good deal. All right. So this is what we're attacking. Again, don't know how it works. 
the next step is that I start to, to Google because what better hacker, what good hacker doesn't Google, right? So uh, all, all my greatest hacks came from Googling. Um, and so what I started with is, is how does this work? And so the first thing that you do is whoever has it, you can flip it on the back. There's a little thing on there that says FCC something, 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 right? So the first thing you do is you're going to Google the FCC something, 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 something. And actually, let me walk you through here because we have a little bit of time. I'm going to show you some of the stuff we'll pull up. You'll get the FCC reports. And really what this is, is, is documentation on how to go after it. So inside, so here's how you start. Look up that ID on the back. You'll have the FCC information. Inside the FCC information, you'll have the how to do it. You'll have what frequency it operates on. You'll have the gist, the marketing gist of how they're selling it. So how the market consumes it. And then you have the technology aspect of, for the most part, how it works. So. Uh, you don't want that one. You want do do do. Your pictures. All this goes in your FCC doc. So here is the uh, the sales piece that goes with it. And inside the sales piece, we have our operation information, the number of keys. We also have a little bit more information in here, and you'll see in here it says the word wagon. Right. And so, has anybody heard this word wagon before? You've been to a hacker conference the past 15 years, right? Okay, so I'll get everybody caught up. Um, the proximity cards where you go beep and you get in the front door. Back then, I mean, maybe still, uh, a lot of them still use the Wigan, pro Wigan protocol. Basically, you're transmitting a facility code and a certain serial number, and it opens up the access door. This is the exact same attack, except now we can do it from football fields away. And I'm going to show you how to do that, all right? So let's go back to the presentation. So I kind of, again, what I'm doing is I, I wanted to walk you through kind of how I started. This is kind of where I got my hands around it. I know that I need to look at 295 megahertz, and I and I'm, I believe based on the communication that I'm looking for something called Wigan. Uh, let me back up because I'm going a little fast. Uh, I don't know anything about software-defined radio. Uh, this is my first project. I, I'm a developer by nature, so if any of this is wrong, uh, let me know. I've made up my own terminology. I, I did my own thing. This is all my own shit. So if I'm wrong, just like correct me, okay? All right, let's keep rolling here. So from here, based upon that, so we're telling a story. So based upon that documentation, I, I, can, I said, okay, let's go look up Wigan receivers. So we have a Wigan transmitter. Let's go look up Wigan receivers. And so this is the way it works. Here are example Wigan receivers. Uh, the way the system works is that these Wigan receivers talk to these transmitters. And then over uh, uh, pins, we'll pin into some sort of general access control panel that will pass you the Wigan code from this module. So basically, the, you have your, in that, in that generic access control module works just like the proximity car system. Because once it gets it in the Wigan format, it doesn't matter how it came from. It came from a, a cat card, a close card, or if it came from long distance. And so essentially, the, they wire them into that central computer, and then the central computer runs the, the, door software for securing it. And that's basically how that works. Any, any questions on kind of how the how it all pieces together? This thing plugs in a server? Okay, great. So here's what we're gonna do. Before I kind of jump to it, we're gonna make one of these things uh, using software. That's what we're gonna end up doing. So how do you start with uh, software-defined radio and hacking with it? So the first thing I did is I started with uh, Cubic SDR. I know because it told me that it's 295 megahertz. So I punched in 295 megahertz here. And uh, I clicked record and I spit it down the wire and this is kind of what comes out. You'll see that the, uh, the, the yellow and red represents energy. It's, it's the, the, the strength of the transmission. Um, and so we, we, it looks a little like a caterpillar to me. Uh, but basically, this is what uh, your access uh, your access thing looks like when you send it across. <clears throat> so take a step further, then we record it. Because if you think about it, so one of the things I do for a hobby is I do music stuff. And when I started realizing that this, this are, these are MP3 files playing notes and we're dealing with a song, then I started treating it like music and breaking it down into measure, measures, right? And so... <clears throat> This is what it looks like from the view when you measure it based upon signal strength. So this other view, the last one, was based on signal strength to some degree, 
but also gave you the, it's the heat map, because it gives you a heat map of all the different areas. It allows you to look at the data differently. Well, now that we know that we want to look at 295, we can, we can slice and dice that data the other way, and we start to see a pattern. And so this is what it looks like when it comes across. You have little marks, and the marks are spaced out periodically. And so, so uh, as I'm telling the story, all of this is done in one night so far. So I'm probably an hour and a half into this. I've got this up, and I just pull out a notepad, and I think, I think, you know what? I think I see a pattern. And so I just start marking my pattern out and writing down the bit string myself by hand. And so <clears throat> let's see if we can guess this together. So bit streams are either 0 or 1, right? And so that's not me. So um, I noticed that the only thing that difference is, is not the signal strength. It's the offset of where those beats are. Right, so we're talking about a rhythm. I see that we have a hit, a hit, a hit, and then it's an offset, hit, hit, right? And I think, okay, that's a weird pattern. That's weird. What does that mean? Well, I can make the assumption that the first bit's going to be a zero <clears throat> because, I, well, technically I made the first assumption that, that bit's a one, so I did everything backwards, but I fixed it, so it works now. Um, but essentially, they have to be bits, and so... The way I sort of figured it out is that when it changes positions, that position means something. And so it's actually going to be position dependent. So when we start in our first position and we stay in our first position, it's going to be that same value. But when we shift positions, it's a new value. Once you've shifted that position and it shifts back, and I'm sorry, it keeps going, then it'll be the same value. But if it shifts again, it's going to be a new value. And so this is what it looks like when you hold it down for one second. It spits uh, 33 digits five times, so for every, yeah, I guess five, five seconds you hold it down, it spits it out a bunch of times. And so this is what it looks like together with a bunch of them. Now, the point to this is that, because I'm going to get to the demodulation and modulation of data, but to the point to this is that we want to hack this, right? We, we want to demonstrate that we can own this stuff. And so the first thing that I see, you tell me, the data is the same over and over, right? Right? Same, same pattern. It looks like the same pattern to me. So what does that mean? What does that mean to us? That means that if the data is exactly the same, I don't, know, I, have to, no, I don't have to know the content of the data to replay it. So out of the gate, you can clone these things. Uh, so I don't think they make them because this is over VHF, very high frequency, uh, 295 megahertz. But you can make one of them just like they do for the... the the RFID key fobs where you put them close together at 125 megahertz. Because the pattern doesn't change, all it's doing is recording a sound MP3 file, not data, and then replaying that sound MP3 file. All right? So out of the gate, we've already cloned our key fobs in the first hour. All right? All right. Well, let's keep going because that's not enough. <laughs> so I do... Be <laughs> so... so before, um, before I go any further, you know, we, we always want to give credit where credit is due. And so um, Holly Grace has done a lot of research on this as well. So kudos to her. Uh, we always want to support uh, women's security. So thank you, uh, Holly. All right. Next slide. Okay. So key, key cloning is great. Key fob cloning is great. That's, that's low-hanging fruit. That's the easy stuff. Let's, let's get harder into it because I'm better than that. And I'm a software guy. And because I haven't got to the software side of it yet, I haven't done my duty. All right. So here's where I started learning new things. So uh, it's called uh, mod de oh, you ever heard of a modem? Modulate, demodulate, yeah. So the concept of converting it into data and back uh, based upon signals. Uh, there are a bunch of different ways of modulating data um, over the air. There are so many freaking ways that that will probably be your number one hangup when doing this. Uh, I can tell you that... Um, Pulse, uh, position independent pulse position modulation isn't even on Wikipedia, but that's what this is, right? But once you get it fixed, so anyway, we'll, we'll go through these a little bit because I think it's worth, it's worth mentioning. Um, PSK and ASK, uh, and FSK, those seem to be the most, and so OK is a subset of ASK. Those seem to be the most common ones out there. Um, the, and so the way it works, so correct me if I'm wrong because I probably am. With FSA, FSK, it's, it's going to shift that data across frequencies. So it's going to work similar to like your FM radio, 
where it shifts it across frequency. So that's why when it rains, your FM, I don't listen to radio anymore, but when it rains, FM radio sounds better because it's not messed up by the, the water drops. But AM radio sounds like crap. Did you know that? All right, cool. Right, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> so I've kind of described this already, but I, I can't, I'll, uh, hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'll slow down. All right, so we broke it down. So what we are looking at is the amplitude of the wave. So this is a, a, a sine wave, right, a Doppler wave going across. Uh, and we call this the baseband. So we're looking at the 295, uh, 295 megahertz in this example. Um, there's, so I've seen other implementations of this at 400 and something megahertz. So there's three or four of these uh, frequency ranges that vendors have FCC licenses to transmit on, but it's the same technology. And I'll, I'll tell you a little about that in a second. Oh, excuse me. All right. So the next one, I mentioned the pulsing piece. So, uh, and I'll go back and explain because I, I enjoy this part. Uh, tying this back to a song with measures and notes, right? And so we think about, in this example, we only have two beats per measure for those music people because beat one is zero and beat two is one. But the thing about it is that it's, if you were to do that simply on, uh, if beat one hit left and beat two hit on the right side of, of the uh, measure, that would actually be called, uh, it's, it's called something else. And the reason that's not as good is because you have to clock sync with the thing you're sending so they both know the beats at the same time. And it's a lot harder. So there's a lot more technology involved to get that done versus pew-pewing a bunch of stuff, you know, based upon offsets. All right. Oh, yes. So PWM, it would be called PWM based upon offset. And PWM requires clock sync. So that's why they do what's called PPM, pulse position modulation or differential pulse position modulation. Yeah, so we're getting very technical, but uh, this part's important. Is this is how you tie it into data. Because once we tie it into data, then we can go ham, right? All right. Uh, sweet. All right, so I, I, I kind of gave the cat out of the bag already. Um, we're, we're attacking Wigan again. So I, I, I am, it is a little bit of old hat, but it's, an, it's packaged up in a brand new shiny box. Um, so kind of break it down a little bit further on what these, uh, how this works. In your bit stream, um, it's going to send you, so 26 digits, 33 bit digits, 33 bits, excuse me. In one of those key fobs, it's 36. In the other key fob, it's 33 bits. I'll show you guys in the demos. Um, but basically, um, they sort of tried to stick with a, a, a standard, but in the newer key fobs, they've thrown it out the window because you can do whatever you want with the bit sequence and the bit space you have. Um, so basically, you have a facility code and an ID number. Uh, your facility code, well, and you have parity bits, and we'll get to the parity in a second. Uh, facility code says, I am in building number zero, building number one. Let's not get confusing. I'm in building number one, and my ID number is 1111, right? The reason the facility code is important is because when they sell the exact same system to the co company next door, you don't want to have access to their system as well, right? So their facility code might be four, right? So that's they felt like that was one one moment of, of strength of confidence to, to help alleviate any type of security is issues. And we, we all know that's, that, that's garbage. Um, the, the next piece is going to be uh, is your number. Now, in 26 bits, you have a 16-bit number. Can anybody here tell me how big the number is with 16 bits? What's the highest number you can have? Who said that? Oh boy, good job. Yeah, good. Everybody raise your hand. Whoever said that, good job. Yes. Go team. Go team. That's correct. So you're telling me that I just have to, if I know the facility code, I just have to enumerate 65,000 requests before I get your answer? Well, that's not good. So they said, you know what? We'll throw more bits in there. We'll make it 33 bits. And you're thinking, 33? That's a weird number. Why are you doing that? Well, because they need parity bits. What that is, is those are uh, bits on the front and back end that do... A, a, a something like a, a CRC check, but it's, it's a parity check. It's a single bit parity check. And the reason that's important is because when you're pew-pewing this stuff over the weather and it's bouncing off of other buildings, you don't know what the hell it's actually going to receive, right? So you have to make sure that the message intended to be delivered is the one that was received. And so that's the parity portion. All right, so 
With 33 bits, we now have a single byte uh, facility code, which means we can go from 0 to 255. I gave that one for you, gave one to you. Uh, and then that means also the last end of it should be 24 bits. So 24 bits, the highest number is like 16 million and change. So that's, that's, that's it's better, right? It's better. Much better. So on the 36, it's, I think it's a whole, it's a whole uh, unsigned integer, 32-bit uh, integer. All righty. <clears throat> so, sweet. Oh, will be all right. All right. So let's, let's jump right into this. I talked to you about the first part where, where we cloned it. That was an easy, low-hanging fruit win. I'm not about the easy wins. I'm about the hard wins. Um, I don't know how to use GNU Radio. I learned. It's really hard. Um, but it, it, it's hard for me because I'm a software guy. I'm not a radio guy. And this is meant for the radio guys. It was built for them. And so really, for me to be successful, uh, I hate to, I'm, not, I'm not here to dog them. I, felt, I was very frustrated in putting this together. I didn't feel like they had adequate documentation to get things accomplished. You know what helped me get this done? Wikipedia. Wikipedia solved 90% of this project. I'm not kidding. All right. So I will, uh, I'm not going to describe this one. I, I will describe it when we do the demo. Uh, this is here to scare you because it got smaller. All right. So I have to test this thing. Well, I live downtown Dallas in a uh, 20, 30-story high-rise. Um, and if you'll see... Um, you can actually get an antenna out there and come to find out you can pick up buildings from four blocks away in the rain. So uh, over a weekend, I got everybody's access code for all the buildings around me. Um, and it was pretty fun to see that demonstrated. And so it looks a little bit like this. And so we're going to do live demos. But essentially, uh, the GNU radio is going to take that data in. Uh, it's going to do the demodulation of it and pass it to a module that I wrote. And that module then converts it to a bit stream and then converts that bit stream to a Wigan code and gives you the Wigan output. So in this example, again, we're going to do, we're going to spend more time on this. Uh, you get your bit stream so you can actually take this and debug it on the internet because there's Wigan debuggers on the internet, if you can imagine that. Um, and then here's your actual results. So here's my facility code and my card ID number and whether or not the Perry succeeded or not. All right. So let's keep rocking. Any questions? I'm going a little fast. Does it make sense? No shit. All right. All right. Well, let's get to the fun stuff. So, again, reading is, is only half the fun. It's it's 30% of the fun because if we have information, we can't do anything with it, then what's what's there to do? Um, so, on this regard, I thought, you know what? I have to be able to transmit these things. So what can I do if I transmit these things? I could brute force uh, uh, other access codes. But is that valuable? Is that valuable? Because I just spent all weekend picking up 1,200. Do I really need another one? Probably not. But but what if I jammed a bunch of, sent a bunch of codes out that were wrong over and over and didn't let anybody in their building? That could be beneficial. What if I jammed the doors open? Let the homeless in? It's a terrible idea. Uh, or furthermore, what if I what if I uh, frame somebody for a crime? Right? These things are used for locks. Ooh. Fun. All right. All right. So next, let's talk about sending this data. Uh, again, basically, you do the exact same thing in reverse. Um, instead of a demodulator, you have a modulator. Um, so I have not released the code for the modulation. Um, I don't. I'm waiting to do measurements to see whether or not I get sued. So let's let's just do the read-only portion of it, and we're going to wait and see what the market says, because uh, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but yeah, so basically it's the exact same process backwards. Um, the thing I think is really important because we do want to talk about the legalese is like, well, Tim, how did you how do you know your stuff works? Great question. I did not try this at home. What I did is even though you'll see here, even though you can dump it to a, a, a an SDR and send that data out. You can also dump it to a file. And if you dump it to a WAV file, then you can pipe that WAV file back into your DMOD code and test it that way. Ah, think smarter. All right. All right, so what, what's the value there, right? So my limit, here are my limitations. Uh, I'm limited to about five messages a second. 
Um, sometimes it might take one or two tries. Again, in a 20, and so I break down the key space. So, so what, what is, does it really make sense for me to brute force all values? No, but maybe, and I'm going to give you the example of maybe at the end. Um, so basically, this is how the math checks out. It would take me a lot longer. So on, what, 16.7 million records transmitting to a second? It's going to be a long time, long time. Um, there are some uh, creative ideas that I've seen on other people's talks on merging those messages and making them go faster. So I think there's some innovation available to do that sort of stuff. But for my talk, I didn't spend the time on that. All right, here's the next one. So I added this, uh, I added this one recently. Um, market impact. I, I can't really measure it. I'm having a hard time. So here's what I've measured so far. In DFW, where I'm from, 70% of the InfoSec guys at the talks I've given, because I've given this at a, a lo couple locals there just to vet it, uh, most of the people there have, at the Lumina Department Complex, have this. And so what I'm trying to understand is how, 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 how prevalent is this out there in fact, if you guys are brave enough, maybe raise your hand. Do, do, does, who here has one? This guy? This guy? Two? Three? Yep. Wusses. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'll figure out how to find out. All right. So here's what I need help on. Um, in order to make this a better talk for DEF CON, I need some of the business metrics on what the risk impact is into the world, and I can't get that. So if you guys can help me out and help me kind of measure, that would be greatly appreciated because, as you guys know, he who lies in this industry will not live long. Right. All right. So, next level stuff. I've got 15 minutes. So, we talked about key, key fob cloning. Um, one of the things I did is I actually breadboarded my own transmitter uh, using components. So, you can actually buy the individual components uh, from Alibaba and such, and you can breadboard your own. Uh, you open these things up, they actually have the, uh, the schematics and, and the FCC guides. So, that was pretty easy. Um, the, uh, the, the trick to that is that you have to have the, uh, the reprogrammer, uh, the inline programmer for the, uh, the, the Flash, the CMOS, or the, the MMU, whatever it is, because um, you have to dump it off an existing one and then remod it back into another. Uh, that was the only limitation I had is because they quit making that, uh, and I had to uh, order 20 of them uh, just to do it. Um, but I proved that I could do it, so that's important. Right. Okay. So uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, one of the things I want to mention, is uh, God codes. I think they're out there, but I need to crowdsource them because I don't have the time. And also, I look like a crazy person pulling on the door every two seconds with a laptop. So however you guys want to help me out with that, not look like a nut. I appreciate it. Um, so where are we at the next steps? Okay. So I think my point to all of this is that. Yeah, great. We could have had an easy win with cloning this at the beginning and just playing the song over and over. But to really get our hands around it and to do more with it at the application layer, we have to enable ourselves. And so now that we've enabled ourselves, that's what we're looking for is application bugs. So in my mind, this is more sort of a stepping stone talk to hopefully opening up new vectors of attacks on these types of systems. Now, I, and I, I kind of blew at the beginning. I, I think I was sort of uh, shook into the core because I genuinely felt secure at home. I know I'm in cybersecurity. I know I get it. I also run a gun company. I feel so, like I, I I feel secure in all these things, but the reality is, is I wasn't secure. I wasn't secure at all, right? And so when I've when I've measured and asked my friends and and the people at these conferences. Everyone else seems to, and I think it's just because we're security people, you guys all seem, seem to agree that, no, you already knew ahead of time that you weren't secure, and, and, that's, and that's, that's bull crap. But I got to tell you, man, I, 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 I was on the other end of it. I, I, was, I, I, I felt absolutely ignorant. So let's talk. So what we did is we kind of just blew, blew up how it works. We talked about how to read them, how to write them, what you can do with them. I think we've kind of covered that process. So in order to be responsible, we have to talk about how to sort it out, right? So the first thing the vendors recommend, and so I, I pull this up on one website. They don't, it's not about this talk. It's about just generically better securing it. They recommend having unique facility codes per user. How is that, how is that beneficial? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I, it's not beneficial to me because, like, you guys, like I just showed you guys, the moment one person uses their key fob to get in the door, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? 
So right now, the market doesn't have a good answer. What I believe the answer might be is a new key fob system. Because it's Wigan. You can't fix the protocol. That's, that's an implementation decision you made. Um, if you'll go to the FCC documentation, they will tell you that there's confidential proprietary information that will not be released in the FCC guides because it will, com it will compromise the, uh, the security of the system. When I read that, I knew there was blood in the water because there's no such thing as security through obscurity or lack of documentation. All right, so I got about 15 minutes left. Uh, let's go ahead and do some uh, demos real quick. Oh, I mentioned about rotating keys. Um, if you could set it up to where it's it's two-way transmit receive and it's, and it's a negotiation, a knowledge, you know what I mean. Handshake. Handshake, thank you. Yeah, one of those things. Then they can negotiate it on the fly, right? So it'd be a little bit better. Something closer, I mean, even though Tesla's not perfect, better, right? All right. Do. Uh, also, all this code is available. Um, it's on GitHub. I don't know. I'm sure I will get it to somebody so they can link it to you guys. I'm not sure what the process is. But as soon as I find out, I will let you know and I will put it out there for you guys. Um, but I also post it on my Twitter account as well. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. So this is our DMOD code. And so on the DMOD, uh, you're going to have a, let's see. Uh, it doesn't, it, no, it's not worth mentioning. All right, that's fine. Um, so in the, in the DMOD, you have examples of being able to use an, R, an SDR. So I, I have in here Pluto SDR, Lime SDR, and an RTL SDR to tag in. Um, there's also stuff in there to tag in the WAV file. Uh, you don't need to know too much details about how that works, but you can use a WAV file. You can open it up here. But basically what you do from there is you pass it through the AM demodulation uh, module. Now, the AM demodulation module is basically an easy wrapper module uh, because what, what, what that really means, Wikipedia says you first do a low bandpass filter, then you do a high bandpass filter, then you do a gain attenuation, and then you do something, AC attenuation, then you do something else. Uh, all of those things are bundled into the AMD mod module. As soon as I found that out, that's why that big slide before got really small, because it's the same thing. Um, so once you do that, you'll, basically what that does is that will uh, allow you to see it kind of uh, as, an, as, an AM, as an AM feed, I guess is the right way to say it. And then AGC is automatic gate control too, so this allows me to uh, gain it up. Um, the reason we're gaining it up is the, so the process is we want to filter out all the noise around our window, uh, to listen on, and then that window we're listening on, we want to pitch it up as loud as we possibly can without interference, obviously, so there's a, there's a little bit of give and take there, and once you've got that, then you've, you've created an opportunity to have the cleanest uh, line signal to be able to deal with the, the information. Once you have that, um, actually, you add a constant of 0.07, and I'm going to show you guys why. Um, I did some uh, some tuning on the signals. And from there, you're going to pass it through the, uh, the pulse position module peak detector. It's something that I wrote. Uh, and then it passes it through the PPM demodulator. And the PPM demodulator is what you're seeing printing that data out at the bottom. Now, let's go ahead and play with it. So you press play. And we're going to get a couple of views here. I think. Oh, huh. stand by. Go. All right. So this is actually two different views of the signal right now. One of the things, so before I get, I get down to this, if you ever have to debug it, the first thing you have to do is adjust this. This auto range is total junk. I don't know why it's there. It doesn't work. The first thing you need to do, so based upon your SDR, your seconds window, your time window, is going to be really, really tiny. Uh, the, the worse it is, the bigger your window will be. So you're actually going to add seconds to it. So I like to see something like 160 milliseconds. 
So now we kind of have a, a bigger view of signal on the wire. The next thing we're going to do is reduce the size of it so it looks small, right? And so now you see a signal line around negative 0.3, basically. And so really what I did is by adding and subtracting that, that constant, I'm adjusting it to get closest to zero. Because in my pulse precision detector, my threshold is zero to detect a peak. So anything over zero says, hey, I got a peak. Let me do something about it. And it passes it to the next step. So what you want to do is get that signal as close as possible to zero without going over to where when you hit the button, who has my clicker? There you go. See? And it comes across like that. Uh, hold it again. That's what they look like. So then you go down here, and here's our codes. So facility code, ID code, that's actually, that's the one from my house. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, who has the other one? Hold the other one down. So that's the 33-bit one. Hold the other one down. Perfect. Okay. So here's the other one. Good job. Okay, you stop now. <laughs> Okay, so in this example, uh, so in the last, I, I did both of them pretty quickly. In this example, my facility code, so it's right here. Here's the entire code. Here's the size of it in 36 bits. My facility code's one. Here's my ID number. And there's a parity success. In some instances, um, it, it, the parity may not check out, but it's still correct. I'm, I'm not, and I'm still fi figuring that out. Uh, remember, I literally made all this up at home. So some, some answers I don't have. Um, Right, yeah, so I, I rolled a little quickly on that. Uh, we've got about eight minutes left. Um, any questions? Hmm? Yeah, let's do one live. Let me see it. Yeah, bro, I got you. I don't offer any legal advice or anything like that. I don't tell you guys. Uh, did I type that right? I can't see it. So it's on a different frequency. Great question. What's yours? Let's do that one first. Uh, do you think you can, want to, you can help me out and find the frequency on this and look this up on the FCC? That way it will burn your own time. What's your screen? I can't hear it, huh? Oh, Wait, which one is it? 331? Three, three, All right, let's find out. Three, we'll do 331 three, first. So I'm going to stop this. Oh, do, 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 do. Three, three, one. Okay. And then we're going to adjust this here. Uh, three, 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 five, three, five, three, one, three, one. Generate play. Do, 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 do. All right, go, bro. Yeah. yeah. Three, three, one, yeah? Here, 
maybe I'll bring it closer. Maybe, who knows, it should work, but. Oh, yeah, this one's different. It, it might be, well, that's weird. Oh, this is a Lexus key, bro. Yeah, so on the Lexus, these are, these are two-way handshakes. These are way different. Those are, yeah, it's going to be a whole other spectrum. So these are going to be just under car, car security, right? Car security is the next level, like OMFG. This is just under that. This is your house security. Not that big a deal, right? <laughs> Got 318? Thanks. Okay. Okay, we'll do that one next. So I see yours come across, and it looks like it needs a little tuning here. It's what? Oh. 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 Okay, so basically what I need to do is record your wave file and tweak it. And it'll be, because it's going to be the same basic thing. Okay. Can I can I see you real quick one more time? Yeah. Okay. So okay. Here's here's the, so this is this is awesome timing. Here's the difference. Your spacing on your notes is different than my spacing. My notes are in every 0.5, 1, and 1.5, and 2 position. Yours, positioning, because I, I have debug code here, is at 0 0.8, uh, 1.8, and 0 0.2. So your, your, your timing is a little off. So what we'd have to do is I'd have to adjust this uh, and make it work for you. And make it work. Yeah, so that's how it works. Uh, I just, uh, I have failed. I'm mostly there. I can do it. I'm a professional. I can fail. I'm good with that. All right, guys. Um, I really enjoyed this. What, uh, what, what questions can I answer for you? Yes, sir. It's not. No. Um, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe in the stuff in the 90s, but any anything recent, no. It's It's a whole other set of problems, and so those are going to be covered by stuff that Charlie Miller has done and some of those guys that did the entire auto-hacking village and that kind of jazz. Um, this is, so again, we are, so it gets kind of confusing because even though it looks the same, how it works on the underneath is can be completely different across vendors. What we're attacking here is specifically anything that is called click safe compatible. I think it's click safe. They gave us the branding to know uh, how, how how you're affected. Anything that is uh, right here, D -d 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 click. Shit, where is it? If it's auto, oh, I think it's also called auto key uh, compatible. Oh, so yeah, yep. yep. Yeah, okay, so the protocol is auto key compatible. So uh, I believe that's going to be the, uh, yeah, protocol, auto key compatible. So anything that's auto key compatible, I believe that's our attack vector across vendors. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, you know, um, from what I can tell, it's very similar. Um, it's, it's even cheaper. Uh, so there's other stuff that's out there. No one's actually demo demodulated, demodulated that data yet. Uh, but if you can do it, give it, get an SDR and record the WAV file and send it to me, I'll help you figure it out. Couldn't be that hard. I did this in a night. 
Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. I mean, so so I do drum and bass. Then we already have a lot of pew pews. Pew pew pew. Yeah, I got it. All right. I'm open to that. I definitely need some creative insight. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Great. You know, so uh, he had a very good question. The question was that, um, so it may not make sense to brute force the entire key space, but do you have a hint or suggestion on where to start? And, you know, I forgot to tell you that trick. You're exactly right. So the starting position is 600,000. The new ID number 600,000 up to, I, I think I've seen up to 1.3 million on the ID number. I've never seen an ID number less, and I bought, I probably bought 15 of these things. And, and with all the data I collected. Very good question. So the key space is not being used. Yeah. Good, one. good job. Wow. You're better than I am. All right, what else, guys? Anything yet? Okay. I'm done. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's beer 30. Uh, everybody. So let's, 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 let's close out, though. Uh, so first of all, it's like generally from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for having me out here. Uh, I want to thank the venue as well. Uh, I just, I really appreciate it. I thought they did a great job putting this together. Uh, I know how much work and effort it takes to put it into this. So uh, I, I know that we opened with this, but I'd like to close as well. Can we give the, everyone around a round of hand applause putting this together? <laughs> All right. It's my understanding there's beer available. Is that correct?